Thanks everybody. Um, my name is Zach Dorf, and for my Fortune 500 company um, project, I did Archer Daniels Penthill Company, um, abbreviated to ADM. Um, I chose to do ADM because they work mainly with supply side of food ingredients, and um, from professional experience, I've dealt exclusively with um, agriculture and grain farming and produce farming, as well as I have a lot of aspirations of maybe entering the restaurant business, you know, kind of as a dream. So I think that a food ingredients provider would give me a lot of context as to how um, food goes from being produced in a field to uh, finished product. Um, the end is number 40 on the Fortune 500 list, so um, that's up from number 40, 49, I believe, from um, last year. Um, my presentation is going to answer three big questions for you. Um, who is the Archer Daniel Maitland Company? Um, how do consumers think food has changed over the last decade, and what is the connection between the two? So, um, mission statement, which I think really shows a lot of other company cultures to unlock the potential of nature to improve the quality of life. And they do that through being um, one of the world's leading food ingredient manufacturers. Um, also going along with the company culture, they have a role, they're kind of like a role model for efficiency for the entire industry. And um, they run a company um, culture in their offices of innovation as a virtue. We encouraging um, lower level employees to come up from the bottom and bring, up, bring forth their ideas. They're always improving. Um, as far as being the second largest, they have 160 different subsidiaries underneath the parent company and operate business in about 107, 170 different countries. Why just think um, that ties into having a second largest reach out of the entire industry. Um, as far as efficiency, two things that they've really prided themselves on are the methods of vertical integration and horizontal integration. Um, vertical integration is when you have a company that acquires all the different levels of production in order to become more efficient. So a good example is Target. They have the retail stores, but in recent years they've also expanded to producing their own foods, their own food manufacturing. Um, their own toy or other um, item manufacturing, um, they've expanded online, so through doing that they become more efficient. Horizontal integration is more acquiring similar businesses to yourself in order to condense the market. So um, a good example of that would be Disney and Pixar. Two separate firms came together, um, kind of created the comp competition and gave both of them an adva advancement in resources available to each company. Um, as far as innovation, they were the first of the food industry to get into uh, many products that you might see in the food ingredient list that you might not quite know what they are. But some of the more famous ones are soy lecithin, um, textured soy protein, brownated vegetable oil, uh, shortening and xanthan gum, which um, are all soy products in their own way. As far as the company history, 1902 saw their founding with John W. Daniels in Minneapolis as the Daniels Lindsay Seed Company. Um, at that time, it was 50% founded by one of his personal friends, George A. Archer, who added his name to the company in 1905 through a popular vote through the ranks, um, becoming the Archer Daniels um, Lindsay Company. 1923, they like, took a huge step and um, acquired the second leading Lindsay processing company, Midland Company, from um, Illinois. Um, after that big step, um, John W. Daniels felt he had served his time as president. He succeeded that to um, George A. Archer's son, Street. 1924. Um, 1928 saw the acquisition of Williams, William O. Goodrich Company, which did a lot of food processing. Um, 1949 saw entrance to the edible oil market, so that's things like canola oil, um, vegetable oil, a lot of the cooking oils you see on the market as well as in production of food. Um, 1960s were a rough time. Other industries, other um, companies were entering the industry, and so um, they were facing a lot of competition, struggling to keep up with. Um, their innovative nature. And so after restructuring of the management, they found success in acquiring corn processing and end-of-line food products like cereal flakes, for example, for corn flakes, that sort of thing. Um, 2018, though, they got back on track with their innovation and won an award um, from the field print program on their sustainability innovation project. So what they did is they worked with agri agriculturists, um, mainly in the Sun Belt, um, GMO crops and sustainable watering techniques for such crops. Um, they, they restructured in 2015 to include uh, four different segments compared to what they previously had as just kind of one massive um, company. They have origination, which is anything and everything 
um, originating from a farm field. Grain elevators, um, they own their own crop fields in some countries, such as rice fields in China. Um, any, anything that has to do with taking that in, processing, shipping it out, logistics as far as shipping it to other places that might use that raw product. Um, oil seeds, is anything oil seeds, like um, sunflower seeds, soybeans, anything pressed for oil. Um, carbohydrate solutions is corn, wheat, and rye. So um, anything carbs based, they do processing for that. And nutrition is end of line food products, such as you know finished food products that you can eat today. Um, here's a chart to explain that. Um, origination is on the left there. Everything in the dark blue is origination related. Um, as you can see, they have both an internal and external use for their foods. Um, more internal than external. Anything they don't use internally gets exported um, to a fair trade market for using the raw materials. But um, as far as internal use, it goes either oil seeds, carbohydrates, um, and from there, uh, some are produced into the uh, nutrition segment as a final end of the line uh, product. Leadership. Um, notable things about it is they um, brand is one of the most diverse senior leadership boards out of um, out of their industry. Mainly heading that is Juan um, Ricardo Luciano, who is actually a South uh, South African um, CEO, who is um, known for coming up kind of from like a humble upbringing. Um, they're main members of the senior leadership. Um, here's their stock price, which I found it interesting. I did a five-year analysis on that and looked at it from um, Yahoo Finance. I noticed that it seemed like they really dipped kind of two and a half years ago, but right now they're they're coming out pretty much where they were five years ago. So there's not too much hasn't been much of a change in um, the value of their shares recently. Um, so let's look at how consumers think food has changed over the last decade. My main research here. Um, some of the known widely accepted changes in food is that processed foods are on the rise and that um, some statistics I found were that upwards of 60% of food consumed daily in the United States is classified as processed or highly processed. So that means it's not so much something you would see from a garden or a field, but it's more something you would see run through a factory, canned or frozen or meat, blended together with pork, chicken, beef, and bologna. Um, Another widely accepted thing is globalism kind of enhance the type of foods you have. Um, you can just see that in your world food um, aisles expanding in your local store. Um, and artificial and um, synthetic ingredients are at an all time high, mainly due to easing regulations on food the past couple of decades. So that brings me to my study. study. Um, I asked five questions, and each question had four answers to um, like an improved, increased, um, remained the same, deproved, declined. I don't know option. So the first question asked if the taste of food has increased or declined or uh, what have you in the last decade. Um, I find it interesting that most people say they didn't notice a difference because for me it has, um, it has really changed. Um, question two, nutritional value. A lot of people said it decreased, which I also found surprising. Three, the overall quality of food has um, also declined, which I think goes along with nutrition. The only one that most people answered positively was the increase in the different types of food, which lines up with what um, I learned from my um, look into globalism. And finally, the overall quality of food has um, remained relatively the same. So this is the response to Paris, and you can see the green bar is the only, and um, question number four is the only one where most people said that food had increased or declined. Um, the connection between these two is that I think because ADM has such a substantial stake in the market, they have a great influence on those responses to consumer perception. Um, for example, they have 13.29% of the oil seed processing, 11.39% of the corn carbohydrate processing, and 21.93% of the agriculture services market. So they comprise pretty significant sections of all those different markets.